All righty. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, again, my name is Paul Hieronymus. I'm the uh, chairman of the Ohio Distance Learning Association. And in our normal format, we want to go around and do a little round robin of introducing each other and ourselves to the group. So the way we always do this, Travis, is uh, one of us will uh, introduce ourselves and then we get to pick the next next person, because even though I, I have a model of Hollywood Squares kind of version of my page, it doesn't mean it's the same for everybody else. So we just go ahead and I mean, you got to pay attention and listen, but then you then also get to pick somebody then and pick on them to be able to talk next. So with that, again, I'm Paul Hieronymus. I am the uh, I'm the uh, um, chairman of the Ohio DOA, and I'm also the uh, uh, director of technology for the North Ridgeville City Schools. So uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and now pick on Travis. Go ahead, Travis. All right. Yeah. Uh, good to meet you, Paul, and everyone else. Uh, my name is Travis Moyer. I'm in for Seth Fleischauer, so I'm with Banyan Global Learning, um, and I, I handle a lot of the sales and marketing efforts for our uh, virtual programs in Ohio and all of America. Um, so let's go to Mary. Mary Ron, I'm a senior instructional specialist with Info Ohio. So we provide um, digital content, licensed digital content to Ohio schools, PK through 12. And I'm part of the instructional team. And uh, I will pass it on to Karen. Hi, everybody. I'm Karen Torgo, and I'm the Senior Manager of STEM Programs and Evaluation at Great Lakes Science Center in Cleveland. And I will pass it on to Laura. Let me unmute myself. I am Laura Bryson. I am with the Broadcast Educational Media Commission. Um, I'm the CIO here, and I've got communications and uh, video conferencing and multimedia productions under my under my department. So I will go ahead and pass it on to Carla. Hi, I'm Carla Mello with the Ohio History Connection, and I'm the manager of the School and Teacher Support Department, which does the K-12 programming for uh, the organization. And I'm going to pass this along to uh, Tom. Good afternoon, uh, Tom Miller. I'm with the Greater Cleveland Partnership. Uh, I run tech programs that are focused on getting students into IT careers. Uh, and um, I will hand it off to Deb. I am Deb Sherhart. I am the Director of Educational Technology for SOIDA in Dayton and CET in Cincinnati. And I pass it on to Michelle. I'm Michelle Carlisle, and I am a coordinator of world languages at East Central Ohio Educational Service Center and one of the Ohio DLA committee members. I don't know who has already gone. Kelly. I think I, I think I'm gonna bring up the end here. I'm Kelly Ganey, I work for management council. I work in marketing communications with a stakeholder um, stakeholder group. Um, and I will be summarizing the meeting for our next newsletter. And what a great segue that is, because that is <laughs> our next topic on the uh, on the agenda here. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, and um, it's great to have everybody. I know that David Stein is going to be joining us here a little bit later as well. So we are going to probably skip over the Treasury report for right now. But uh, if need be, I can also just give out the good news. Hey, things are going well. Um, anyways, um, let's uh, talk a little bit about the newsletter. We got our first newsletter out. I'm very excited about that. Yes, even as hoarse as I am, I'm very excited that we got our first newsletter out to the public. And that's great news. Uh, we are looking at uh, doing a little bit of an update uh, with that in that we are going to be exporting our two listservs to be able to create sending groups in some more. So that maybe, hopefully that'll clean it up a little bit. I think we had some little breakage there because we had to forward it to an email to then go out to an email. So we're gonna try to see if that'll help us out a little bit and work forward with it. But we're really excited that we got the first newsletter out. And the best news about that is, is we're going to have another one coming out on, I believe, November 23rd. Is that right, Kelly? And unmute me. Yeah, I have that after today. I have a day uh, absolutely dedicated next week to get this thing completed. 
and we'll get it out in time. We'll be much, much more timely. The first one we knew is going to be a little bit of a challenge, and it was. And but I, I think in with challenges came wonderful opportunities to learn. And that is exactly what we did, you know, especially with kind of the challenges with the listserv and understanding tracking and analytics. But in the end, we got some great response to it. I mean, there were a lot of opens, you know, from the, from the email. So that was that was oh, exciting. excellent. Yeah. Good. Well, that's thank you very much. That's great. And if you uh, get a chance, let us know on how, what those stats were. That'd be great. I just I haven't had a chance to get in there and look myself. So that's great news. And uh, we look forward to another great news that are coming out here pretty soon. All righty. So um, as we mentioned that with the, with the uh, state of the chair, we're, we're doing pretty well. We're still getting people who are signing up uh, for New How DOA, either as associate members or as you know, and, and, or as even as paid members. Uh, we do not have any new paid members uh, since the last time we met, but we've had a couple of people through our last uh, collaboration activity who have become associate members. So our, our net is becoming wider all the time. So that's a very exciting piece um, involving that, which does lead us to our whole committee piece. And there are vacancies. We do have, still have a vacancy open out there for anybody who would love to be involved as the, for professional development. Um, and, and if not, then I'm going to kind of take that role and we'll focus primarily on OETC with it. But and then we'll talk a little more about that here in a bit. But if anybody is out there saying, boy, I'd love to have an opportunity to be a, to take a leadership role in Ohio DOA. This could be a great opportunity out there for you. How would I do, Carla? Did I sell it? Did I sell it? OK, good. All right. <laughs> So, but let's uh, move on to our um, special programs group that has been really active uh, lately and I, I forgot to put Michelle's name on it. So then I'm going to go ahead and give an update on that, even though Michelle is our chairperson. I don't feel right just kind of sticking it to her there. So I went ahead and pulled some stats from our last um, collaboration, which we just wrapped up this week. Thank goodness uh, with um, our monster match. And uh, we had a really good turnout. We had 37 teachers. Uh, Third and fourth grade teachers signed up for the program, uh, which wound up, wound up representing 31 different school districts. So that's great that we had everybody from, you know, Cleveland all the way to Cincinnati. We had people from all over. It was some really exciting collaborations and uh, some pretty darn cool looking monsters that were created by our kids. But what we love about that project, again, is the is how in this collaborative project, we're working on kids working together in teams. We got kids writing, we've got kids reading, we have kids presenting. And all of those skills being pulled into one fun activity just makes it all worthwhile. And uh, when we all of a sudden done, when we paired up all of our teachers, we wound up having 22 Monster Match connections, which is, you know, pretty good amount, seeing that, you know, everyone's being paired up. So you had a lot of teachers who signed up to do more than one. So that was, uh, that was really fun too. So we had, uh, so was, a lot of times it was fun that we'd have you know, teacher A would be with uh, would be like with a school in Cincinnati, and then her second class would be connected with a school in Cleveland. So it's just a, a great chance for us to have that spread out around across the board there. So again, real happy with that. Uh, we should be sending out our evaluations to our classroom teachers who participated here shortly, because we always like to get their feedback as to uh, how what you know how how can we make the program better, and that's what we're always looking to do. So that's a, that's a good piece uh, right in there, just of some stats. Um, this is also getting us prepared for our next two collaborations. Oh, I'm very excited. We have my favorite one, the Holiday Storytelling Extravaganza. This is where we could use your, your help. We would love to have people read to our kids. So um, I'm going to pull up uh, the, uh, the website for that here. Give me one second here. We have the website already designed. It's going to come up to the wrong thing first, but that's okay. We're going to get that up here first, and then let me switch to holiday storytelling. Just a reminder to everybody about what the way that program works. Uh, holiday storytelling is we are we have a guest. We do it a two day, all day video com video conference, and with that, oh. If I could just get myself back into my right view here. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, here we go. There, sorry about that. 
Um, with that, we're looking for principals, superintendents, content providers, people willing to give up some time or 30 minutes of their time to take a digital story, put it out there and using like Overdrive or Lindy or uh, maybe even Amazon books and, and demonstrate and put that out for the to showing the students the pictures of the books while they read to the classroom. So every 30 minutes, the place goes crazy with another um, with another guest reader and we have our kids connected and shared with us. We do this project in partnership with our friends at OCM BOCES in New York. So this is available to all schools in Ohio and New York. Um, Amy Kesey is the originator of this project and she has been working with us for for quite some time with this project and she is offering, uh, she always lets us, loves the collaboration between our two states and, uh, and it's a great way for us to be able to get this out there for everybody. I have this linked in, in our um, in our agenda. So if you so if you did if you're trying to read my screen, uh, you don't you don't have to. You can actually uh, pull it up yourself to see that. We are going to be doing our call out for presenters for readers on November 28th, shortly after the release of our next newsletter, and then starting December 5th is when we start the. Mass of all of our, our little kiddos classrooms uh, registering to connect for the sessions. Uh, with that, then we we don't require the kids to the uh, the schools to have a camera. To be able to uh, we do not require them to have a camera to participate, but we strongly encourage it because it sure is a lot more fun to read the people than it is to read to letters and icons. So we, we, we encourage uh, our classes to do that. And many times we'll also, we'll pick a school and say, you're our interactive school or a couple of schools to be your interactive ones so that they, so we can actually have some interaction between this, the sites as we connect through. But again, though, what we did find is we had a lot of classrooms connect. We didn't have any camera capabilities at all, just being able to connect and hear the stories. And it was still a great thing for all of our kids and our teachers. So uh, again, we're gonna put, you kick that one off here again in December, December 15th and 16th. So mark your calendars. Think about um, administrators and people you would like to engage in an opportunity to get in front of kids. Great program. And um, looking forward to that one taking place again this year. Exciting stuff. Thank you, Mary, for throwing the uh, the agenda in the, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the chat there. Excellent. Thank you. Shortly after we're done with that, as soon as we catch our wind from uh, the holiday extra extravaganza, we get right back in it with Math Marbles. Math Marbles is another one of our exciting programs that we are going to be offering. And let me get to that. Here we go. Uh, that is also linked in our agenda. Uh, this is a real nice program because it's a quiz bowl. This is designed for middle school classrooms to be able to participate. And basically, we get, we're pairing up teachers based on their common dates and times. And then each of those, those classes are going to work together to create a presentation that is word problems. So they create the math problems. They then have the their connecting school is competing to solve the question. So they're competing with, it, with themselves. That way, we don't have any issues be, between schools. So the kids, their, their own groups are then competing to try and solve the questions. And uh, we go back and forth between each of the schools with that. And we just have a couple of, they'll create some math problems and we pray that they actually have the correct answers when they are doing them. Because unfortunately as facilitators, many times we don't see them until like 30 seconds before they're done. So we are not sure if the, if the answers are right either. So it's a lot of fun though that we do with it and it's a great, opportunity for to get our classrooms connected and uh it's a nice program for uh for our middle school math classes so math is always one of those areas we don't have a lot of content for so it works out great that we have this opportunity to be able to bring this program to our to our schools Once uh, we get through with that, our next program, we don't even put it on the agenda yet because it's, it, doesn't, it kind of runs a little later, is going to be, we'll be supporting Read Around the Planet again. That is actually run through the CILC website. And uh, that's, again, another great program that, that is a celebration of literacy. Classroom teachers get you know, sign themselves up with their available times 
and are paired up with somebody, somebody in the United States or beyond. And uh, a lot of times it's Texas, but then I mean, we're, we're Ohio. Usually we don't have, you know, usually people aren't paired up with people in their own state, but uh, uh, it has happened once or twice, but it's a great opportunity for classroom teachers to do some reader's theater and some events for you know, anything that celebrates literacy. So we'll be, uh, we'll be promoting that program again this year and uh, get that started out there. So with that, that kind of wraps up things for our, com for our special programs committee. Um, Michelle, did I miss anything? I don't think so. I mean, we're busy, but the participation has been good. Yeah, and if there's anybody out there who would love to be on this committee to help us with these things, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. We have a great time doing it. And uh, it's, not, it's not too taxing. It's really, it's not too bad. It's a, it's a nice group to, to work with if you're anyone interested in being a part of any of our committee, any of this, these committees, we really would love this. Always happy to take more people to help with these. It's, it's, it's a great way to kind of get those things going. All righty, that takes us to OETC. As we've shared uh, previously, that uh, OETC is back and in person. I am thrilled that we are back, gonna be back in Columbus at the convention center, offering, you know, seeing people that we see on TV all the time. It's gonna be a great program. We're really excited about it. Um, there has been a change in the management of it for those who are just hearing about this for the first time. It is now being run by ODE and uh, James Freeman is, uh, is the lead on that and he's doing a fantastic job. Uh, Michelle and I and several and David, uh, are all on that committee to uh, help and with Deb. that program. And Deb, did I miss Deb? Sorry, right, Deb. Uh, and Deb as well, who uh, are all on the committee and uh, are really excited uh, for another really successful conference. Uh, we've sent off to, uh, to the conference our request for what we're looking for. And give me one second here to just call for a second. Okay, sorry about that. Um, we have now submitted our, our, our request to, uh, to James for what we're looking for. We're, we, we're hoping to have, and I just say that, just hoping because we don't, until we get a, an affirmative on that, uh, to have floor space on the convention center floor for the, uh, in, the, in the exhibitor area for our Ohio DOA um, area for content providers to be able to promote programming and be able to you know, help sign up people to be members of Ohio DOA and just, shake hands with the teachers that we see all the time on video. So it's a great opportunity. We're expecting probably big numbers this year uh, with it being its first time being back in a while. So this should be a, this should be a real exciting thing. And it's also a, uh, it's a, some of it's, it's, it's a, it's a, uh, it's an alumni year of what is it? 25 years or something like that. Is that the amount 25? All right. Excellent. So we've got um, a nice opportunity with that. We're also looking to uh, hopefully host a have a room, uh, a, a conference room that that we that we have a majority of our sessions in, and uh, we're working with them to get those put together. What we are going to be looking though for is some help with some presentations, and so we've come up with a with some ideas of our own that we're looking at. But any of you who would love to be presenters at the conference and do it, you know, as part of the Ohio DOA, you can always just submit yourself just as your own, but we, if you want to do it, help, you know, do it with us. Um, please let us know what you're, what, you know, what you're, what you'd like to submit in your titles. And uh, we will, we will actually try and put those under the blanket of Ohio DOA and help promote those as well. Um, some sessions though, that we're looking to have this year, uh, we want to do a session talking about our course offerings that are available from uh, several of our members, uh, you know, Michelle and, and, uh, and the other ESCs that are offering programs. Uh, we're also looking to do an intro to Zoom team and meet, bringing it into your classroom. You know, we know teachers are all familiar with the program, but many of them are still struggling with how does this kind of fit into their classroom? Uh, we're looking to do a, uh, a beginner session on that about how to do the one-to-many uh, kind of a concept there. Um, we're going to reach out to CILC. We'd love to have uh, Tammy present a little bit about how teachers can find 
all you know, amazing content providers like yourselves as well uh, for programs. Uh, we're also kicking around the idea of doing a distance learning scavenger hunt. So we'll be uh, looking for some help from as many of our content providers um, on that session where we were, we're thinking about doing a session where we will put like a couple of uh, Chromebooks around the room and people have to go in and guess where the content provider is from. So you'll have to ask some of you to kind of be careful with your backdrops or, or gray them out or whatever, so we don't give it away too easy. And uh, have a little bit of questions to figure out where are you connecting from? It'll be a kind of a fun kind of thing, piece to have to get teachers engaged with uh, with that is, and, uh, and we have some driving questions like, you know, what kind of programs are you offering? You know, kind of things like that, what grade level? Just a way to help you, then a, a kind of a sly way to help people be able to promote programming as well as teachers to be engaged in the, in the uh, programming. Uh, we're also looking to try to do a couple, uh, maybe one or two showcases as well with uh, panels where we're looking to maybe focus on specific curriculum now. Do one on careers, one on science, one on language arts. Uh, so we'll be uh, reaching out to our content providers uh, for, for help with some of those. We're also looking at doing a session with some of our national parks, giving our classroom teachers an understanding of how Kids who maybe can't, you know, are not likely to get out to, you know, some traveling out to some of these locations, how they can bring those and give those experiences to kids in their classrooms. We're definitely going to do a session on collaborations. And then, of course, we've got to have our meet and greet times and we will be running a distance learning meeting during that time. So, um, so with that, if any of you are planning on submitting a session that is tied to Ohio DOA, please email David, myself, or Michelle, or Deb, and uh, we can kind of coordinate that and be on the lookout for those sessions so we can kind of put them all under our umbrella. And then when as we get closer, we start promoting the heck out of them. Um, we also want to promote, though, that uh, Info Ohio is also going to be doing a lot of great sessions at the, at the, at the conference as well. So um, if you have something that's just focusing on literacy, that's not general um, video based, I mean, still reach out to Mary or her team. I'm sure they would love to, to hear about it and help promote it as well. So that's our, our big push for Ohio DOA. Um, does anybody have any questions um, about what we're kind of working on and how things are going? I have a question for you on um, uh, submissions for call for proposal or presentation. Do you want people to contact you for that? Are you gonna be the one submission, submitting the proposal presentations? We would prefer not to. We would rather have the people submit them and then you tell us what you submitted so that we can okay. then go look for those because we'll be in the review committee and we will we'll be looking for those sessions. Okay, got it. Yeah. Does that sound and right, Paul, Devin, Michelle? All right. Go ahead, Kelly. I'm sorry. Or was it Carla? Sorry, Carla. I think it was Mary that said something. Oh, go ahead, Carla. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I just have a couple of questions. So uh, for the session that we are uh, actually sending as a proposal, we are doing a couple of ones, but they are not like necessarily tied with Ohio Distance Learning Association. It's just like about what we do or resources for teachers in social studies, digital resources and tech tools. Uh, even though they are not tied completely to Ohio Distance Learning Association as providers, you guys would be also promoting those or it needs to be tied with Ohio Distance Learning Association. Wow, that's there you go. Stop me right off the first question. Thanks, Carla. Um, I, I, I think, um, geez, I don't know. I, I guess I, I would say if you're not going to utilize the video conferencing platform or that arm of, if your first focus isn't reaching the classrooms via your video conferencing offerings. I would say propose it, let us know so that as a review committee, we can see it, but mm -hmm. it may end up not being actually presented in our distance learning space. But if you also want to have a session or a demo of content and propose that as well, then we'd want to put that into our own room space. Does that make sense? No, it makes sense. That's, that's okay. why I'm asking because like we are not planning on making that connection with those two proposals with you guys because it's much more broad than just the right. learning thing that we do. Uh, and if 
if there's room for like a showcase or something with you guys, we can totally do it. We have been doing this what I call for like many years now. Uh, so we can do that too. I just I just want a clarification exactly so I don't push things that cannot be pushed to you guys at all. Uh, yep. before that. So um, yeah, and Carla, I would also say though too. So after you do do after you have your presentation submitted, and let's say you you know, we we I'm sure they will be accepted. Um, so when you yeah, have, when you know that they've been accepted, um, feel free though to use a listserv to then to promote. Hey, come see us at Ohio DOA you know, at the OATC conference. We're going to be presenting the following sessions, even if they're not DL ones. I I don't see a problem with that, or even having information on the on the table. Mm -hmm. um, about your organization that are for events or, or, or activities that are not just video related, that's still okay. You are, I mean, as a member, we don't have a problem with that. Um, just and so that, that hopefully that helps. I think that takes me, me to the <clears throat> other question that I have is that in previous years when we were doing in person, we always had a table uh, that I know it was like an agreement between our relationship with Ohio Distance Learning Association and the people that were organizing the conference. I remember it was normally like us, Cole side, somebody else on the other side, and we would have that. Uh, so are we having access to either a free resource table in the exhibitors room or some sort of discount because of this relationship? So Carla, I'm not sure who got the email that I sent out. Let me I look. I, I don't think I did. No, and I wonder what's the email address that's registered as the Consortium member, is it is it a generic? Is the education at Ohio at OhioHistory.org? But I get I have I'm in the in our guys like mailing list with my email on that one because I receive I'll always double the messages when I send it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always get two Ohio Distance Learning Association messages every time that you send something. But it should be education at OhioHistory.org. Okay. Or my email, cmallow at ohiohistory.org. I had sent out uh, just a general email asking who was planning on coming in person so we knew how much table space to ask for in the vendor. Um, so I will resend that to you now. I appreciate it. Yeah, and, and we're still kind of treading our water with, you know, where we are with that. We, you know, we, yeah, I assumed with the changes in the administration of the conference and also being so long since the last time, some things I might have shifted. And I know that Matt used to do a lot of work with the, the conference too, uh, which would give us some leverage with that. But I, I'm curious to see if we are doing that. But yeah, I will wait for a Michelle message and I'll reply accordingly. But those are my two questions. Perfect. Go ahead, Mary. Uh, well, I just wanted to kind of uh, piggyback on onto what you said. Um, we're just we're just encouraging and trying to raise awareness about o o Ohio, uh, the OETC. So um, they don't need to contact us. We're, we're not looking for any or asking for any presentations, but we're just encouraging, you know, teachers in general to it's been a while and we're just uh, doing our part to help push the message out there. So um, so we've let our, our users know and shared with them the link to they can sign up and just encourage encourage people to take a look at it. It's been a while, right? Since um, since OETC has been in person. So we just encourage uh, um, anyone if you can find the link there and um, check out OETC. And it's been a while since you've been there. Definitely take a look again. So it's, we're excited to see it back in person. So yeah, they don't need to contact, contact me about anything. Um, just encouraging people to to check it out and um, and consider consider presenting or consider attending. <laughs> Excellent, thank you, Mary. Paul, is there a plan to do actual connections with classes again in the DLA presentation room? I see Michelle. Uh, yeah, that would be more of a Michelle question than me. I have envisioned that. Yes. Now, okay, because I was planning on, on doing that again. Yeah, so it's going to depend on what vendors are able to bring and donate equipment or set up equipment. I've envisioned at least a portion of our room space being connections back to content providers that either can't be there in person or have staff back at, in person or even some of the out-of-state folks. That's, I mean, again, we're, we're waiting to see what equipment 
we get with us. But that was my plan. That was one of my plans, Paul. So I guess my question was, you know, back to you, Deb, was are you talking about in the DL room or are you talking about in the, on the floor space? Of uh, So are you thinking of connecting to classrooms that were, were muted and were just witnessing instruction being delivered? Or are you thinking about that being as part of the presentation? Right, yeah, it's been courses? in the exhibit hall. <clears throat> no, it's been in the exhibit hall. It's been in the DLA room, presentation room, where um, an instructor is connecting with a class, typically somewhere in Ohio. Um, and then attendees are sitting in the room watching the behind the curtain kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's something we okay. would definitely want to be up an example or at least video of it, of uh, something like that happening in the presentation piece. And then if we could swing it on the on the, on the floor, I think that's another great piece for people to be, to promote programming because they just walk by and say, wow, look at that. Um, right, you know, yeah, what's, what's we've done it for on? several years. Yeah, and I've already um, assigned that to one of my instructors, so. Oh, excellent. She's she's ready to go. Good. Yeah, always the hard part is you always got, got to remember we just got to make sure we keep those microphones off because the conference coming into the uh, the, the conference floor coming into that classroom is pretty much came up. But um, it, yeah, it's a, it's it's a great it's a great you know discussion starter. It really is. Also, yeah, we keep in mind that OATC is our biggest recruiting event for membership of Ohio DOA. So with us being two years out from being in person, this could be a very exciting, this could be exciting for us to be able to kind of get the, the listserv up and running a little bit more aggressively than it has in the past. But, um, you know, because really the only way people have been able to sign up is by stumbling across us or by signing up for one of our collaborations. I mean, did we just just, we just really have not had that great vehicle of, of, of uh, membership drive. So this would be um, our, our, this is our Super Bowl as far as uh, membership goes for uh, for the Ohio DOA. So we're looking really looking forward to having that opportunity again. And um, I know that one of the things that we've done in the past, we'll try and do is you know, get a Chromebook set up that's got um, <clears throat> that has the um, the online re uh, registration form up and running in kiosk mode so that they can just quickly get in there and register right there. Because we all know what happens when they write it on paper. Those are a lot of members that never become members because we lose the paper. So uh, it'll be nice to be able to get people registered right off, right into the right into the list, into the, into the spreadsheet and be able to get those people in. All righty, does anybody else have any other questions or comments or good stuff to share about oh, the OATC conference coming up? Submission, uh, the session proposals are due the 25th, November. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. A little bit of yes. a short turnaround. But... Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, all these are due by the 25th. So yeah, we're gonna get, I'm gonna have to get working on these pretty fast and quick and fast and hurry. Uh, but uh, yeah, thank you for, for, for sharing that information because I forgot to give it. All righty, uh, the last item on our agenda because uh, I, you know, unless David John jumps in here last minute is an update on the course connection database committee. Uh, we did have our first meeting uh, with several members of Ohio DOA and, uh, and that committee and uh, we are and optimistic in that, that this is this is this is going to happen. Um, we're working through uh, the whole process of going from the previous database that we have created and the shell that we have done, and uh, getting that moving forward to uh, to a model that's going to be supported uh, financially with the management council and Info Isle. So we are very excited about that. Uh, Erica Clay is our is the head of that committee, and we are um, happy that we have several of our members who are a part of it. Um, so that'll be continually moving forward as we have meetings and keep getting, you know, going forward. It's uh, not going to be uh, something that we're going to be able to highlight in this year's OETC, we don't feel, uh, but it is something that we want to still keep on people's radar and be aware of. So with that, does anybody else have any 
Michelle, I know you're on that committee with me. Anybody else? I mean, does anybody else have any comments or anything they want to share about it? Excellent. Other than that, knowing it's happening, we're moving forward. So uh, we're, we're, you know, we're very excited that uh, that this is going to, this is a program that's going to keep moving forward and going forward with us. All righty. Um, so with that, that wraps up my agenda that I was able to send out to everybody. Um, is there anything that anyone would like to share for the good of the meeting or the order? Silence is golden. So either two things are happening right now. It's gorgeous outside and everyone wants to get out of their offices and run, run, run out and be able to enjoy it. Or we just are, I just, we covered everything out there for involving the Ohio DOA and I'll take both of those. How does that sound? Well, everybody, I want to thank you all for, uh, for joining us here today. Look forward to seeing the newsletter coming out on the, around the 23rd ish. And uh, we are, you know, I want to make sure we wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving, a Merry Christmas, and looking forward to seeing, if not all of you, most of you, some way, shape, or form in our holiday storytelling extravaganza. Thanks, everybody. We'll, uh, we'll wrap things up and uh, have a great uh, holiday season. Thanks, Paul.